Can Secret Invasion Save the MCU? No. No, it can't. Even if it's a masterpiece. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done there. Plus, this is a streaming show. It's not a movie. So, anyway. Uh, but, of course, uh, this was one that, uh, despite all the problems, I expected to see come out because it was well underway. Uh, I still think the same is true of, of the second season of Loki. Uh, despite uh, reshoots and all that stuff, I think they'll uh, not necessarily. I think not necessarily on schedule because I think this was already kind of late. Can't re remember exactly, but uh, as I'm taping this, this should come out in June of 2023. And uh, but uh, some damage to Nick Fury's already been done thanks to Captain Marvel and her kitty cat. Um, and too much silly, too much silly about him. Whereas uh, this approach uh, looks very, very serious, um, and uh, it's it's easily it's the Nick Fury show uh, is what it what it is. Despite what the, the title suggests, it's kind of sort of sounds like the same plot, but a lot of the elements from the comic book series are not available to them. Uh, Many of the characters are gone. Uh, very important ones have not been introduced at all. So uh, I don't see what characters you could swap them out with to make them that significant. Um, I guess Sharon Carter could be the character I'm thinking of. <laughs> it was Spider-Woman in the original series. Uh, and, and what they seem to suggest about her turning dark and all that in Falcon and Winter Soldier, and maybe they would... If this is like Falcon and Winter Soldier, which should have been their best show, uh, but if they ruin it like they did this, uh, like they did, if they ruin this one like they did Falcon and Winter Soldier, then, oh, my God. Oh, boy, that's so bad. <laughs> but the odds are they will. And by now, the damage is so bad that will there be enough interest in it? And the streaming has not been uh, the savior that uh, they thought it would be quite the opposite. So even if you have a good show, um, that's not going to be enough to uh, uh, change course that the MCU uh, is on in its downward spiral uh, into the toilet. And as I taped this, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, will be in theaters this weekend, and uh, it, the projections keep uh, dropping and declining. And um, don't know. I always thought Guardians would be one of the big bumps for them. And they think, see, we're back on track and all that. And then here comes Marvels and that one. <laughs> and whatever other offerings they have or can offer. I mean, now there's a writer's strike. So that's going to scuttle some things. Uh, some of the stuff that's done, yeah, that should roll out. Uh, they just can't do a whole lot of changes now. Uh, but, um, but I, you know, none of it is enough that's going to salvage anything. And so I always thought Guardians would get a bump for them. The only other thing to follow that would be Deadpool when they get to that, if they're still around to get there. <laughs> and then eventually Spider-Man should get some excitement, but that's all a ways away. And uh, and now it's looking like even Guardians. Uh, the, the people have just uh, lost interest, and the thrill is gone for a Marvel brand. So, hmm. But anyway, doesn't mean this show won't be any good. It could be. It's just not going to deliver anything uh, that MCU needs at the moment. So anyway, uh, this particular article is about the Empire Magazine did some images like this one. And uh, it says, oh, eye patch, goatee, and long black leather coat are peeled away. And this, although he's wearing a long coat in a lot of the scenes in the trailer. But anyway, the fury we find underneath is altogether more fragile than we've ever seen him before. Well, he was pretty fragile in Captain Marvel when the kitty cat scratched his eye out. And tee-hee, giggle, giggle, that's how he lost his eye. You thought he lost it fighting Hydra or something like that. But no, he was a kitty. <laughs> so anyway, all those things are part of Nick Fury that's invulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a, a filthy kitty cat claw. All right, I know it was an alien, but still. Here you have a guy who's showing his face. Well, he always did. He never had a mask. He just had an eye patch, you know. And showing his age, which he, he always did. And now he's even older because it's been some years. But anyway, it's an opportunity to humanize someone that everybody thinks is superhuman. 
I didn't think he was superhuman. I thought he was badass, but then you turned him into a joke. Tee-hee. So Secret Invasion will be six hour-long episodes. That's probably a good number. If they uh, they can keep it tight and, and, uh, and no opportunity for idiot filler, then uh, that probably could do well for it. You know? A lot of different uh, streaming shows could have cut off some uh, episodes. They didn't need them. It, it dragged it down. Anyway, uh, let's see. Samuel Jackson says, I had to figure out some stuff and work out some new things, which I've been trying to do for a while. It's great to have an opportunity to find out who he was and delve into how much of a toll his job actually takes on his personal life. Well, that's pretty much the standard answer you get. Uh, I mean, I mean, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Spoil everything? So you know, I didn't really tell you much. But anyway, Swartz, uh, uh, producer Jonathan Swartz, adds that the softer side of Fury. One of the things we really wanted to bring to this show that makes it a little bit unique in the Marvel Universe is vulnerability. That's right. That's right. I mean, of course, we already saw that his eye was vulnerable, but anyway, Nick Fury is just a human. Or is he? Maria Hill, Kobe's Wolver, is just a human. Or is she? A single bullet could take them out. Could it? Well, yeah, it probably could, even if they're squirrels. That's the deal, you know, they might find out the big reveal he was a scroll all along. Where's the real Nick Fury? We don't know. Uh, I could be dead. I don't know. A, a bullet did take him out. Anyway, that's something we don't always get in the MCU. And that's true, Mr. Schwartz. We sure don't. Uh, you know, like drama and compelling and stakes and stuff like that and actual uh, concern. Uh, not anymore. Uh, She-Hulk was uh, peak stupidity. To the point, where else could you go with this idiocy of always believing uh, the stupid jokes uh, was the secret sauce to the MCU success? It, it, it was not. You can make an argument here and there that it was an element, but not to the extent that you did it. And uh, She-Hulk went full-blown because then he's like, We know this show's stupid. We meant it to be. <coughs> and uh, now look at you. So anyway, to bring that level of tension, fear, and vulnerability into one of my shows was really exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I guess he's got a point there. It's uh, it's like fresh. <laughs> yeah, well. So anyway, there's the cover. There he is. And there's a scroll behind, you know, floating behind, hauntingly. And oh, they put a green shade on him. Oh, boy. Well, what do you think that means, huh? So is this the end of Nick Fury? Well, if it turns out he was a scroll all along, then we'll find out that the real Nick Fury's been dead a while. And uh, that could be the deal. Yeah. But uh, Samuel Jack says, I love playing and I love the fact that they're opening him up to all these other possibilities and this whole life that he has. So hopefully I'm not done. And in this new phase of the MCU, I'll be floating in and out of there somehow, some way. Well, it seems like at the very least they did do a plot where he does die. You know, it is kind of a send-off for him, but a lot of damage was already done. Yeah, yeah. But the odd thing, again, uh, I don't know if this was supposed to be the original scheduling, because here comes the Marvels, and guess who's in that? Nick Fury. And it's a silly movie. It's all silly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good cover there. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, if he's dead, or is that just, you know, a fake Nick Fury because real Nick Fury's dead? And it could be. Yeah. Or, you know, it's kind of like what, uh, what DC did with, you know, James Gunn announcing everything, and then they, they, they shuffled their movies around so that the Shazam people had their new costumes, but they didn't explain it because it was supposed to be that the universe had changed because the Flash movie had happened. But now the Shazam movie came out. I know no one saw it, uh, but it came out before the Flash movie. And so, uh-oh. <laughs> See, it doesn't really work. So, could that be the case because of all the de delays on the Marvels as well? Because they're like, oh, my God, this is no good. And they kept reshooting it and trying this and trying that. I don't know. Uh, that could be a bit of a mess, too. I mean... It, I guess they're starting to care because they started to know, hey, they're not watching anymore. You know, he, 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 sometimes, sometimes even an idiot can see that. So anyway, um, 
Okay, this tells you who's in it. Um, Amelia Clark is almost obviously a scroll herself. In fact, uh, here's some more posts. There, see, it's probably her in the makeup. <laughs> Boy, you wake up in the morning and I, what the hell happened? <laughs> Well, time to get to work. Uh, you know, and then there's the other one. Oh, look. Oh, oh, there's a scroll. We already know a scroll impersonated him. It was Telos doing it in Spider Man, but, uh, well, you know. But that was just for Tee Hee. Um, so, Colby Smothers, she'll be there. That's, you know, Martin Freeman. Uh, like Million Clark, Delmer Maroney. I don't know. Gillian Sky, Christopher McDonald, Carmen, and a, a, a joke. I'm sorry. Jogo? I don't know. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I don't know how to do it. Uh, Charlene Woodward. Yeah. And uh, the crossover series showcases the factions of shape shifting scrolls who have been infiltrating us for years. They might do things like, well, well you know, presidents that w uh, in the past weren't really who they were and that sort of thing. Hey, they're still alive living on an island somewhere. Uh, Don Cheadle will be reprising his longtime role as Colonel James Rhodey Rhodes. Or will he? So, yeah, they'll reveal he's not really. Uh, uh, you know, roadie. You know, the real roadie is, uh, I don't know, on a spaceship or something. But the one thing they could have done is obviously some characters who have died throughout the MCU. Turns out they're not really dead, but then who would that be at this point? Would it be Captain America? But he didn't die. He just got really old. That would ruin his whole story that that was him going back to be with Peggy and all that to reveal the tell it. Yeah, the real Captain America is in a scroll prison somewhere. Or that Tony Stark didn't die. But then that takes away from his big sacrifice. You know? And uh, why would he do that? Uh, Black Widow, who definitely isn't coming back. I think Scarlett Johansson already said, yeah, 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 I'm not coming back. <laughs> you know, like, recast the role if they want to, but now they'll just let Florence Pugh be their Black Widow from now on. Dude. And Black Widow's sister gets to be Black Widow. Uh, but there again, same problem. Her sacrifice, why would she do that? Now, they, to understand if they're doing this like in the series, that this is a different, more super-duper, pooper scooper shape shifting abilities that these scrolls have, and that they can actually copy uh, your personality traits, but also the superpowers that the individual superheroes have. I see some special effects briefly in this, but I don't really see anybody... Um, you know, showcasing superpowers. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of superhero people in this one. There might be some brief cameos and stuff, but beyond that, as far as being integral to the plot as it was, where, you know, the leader of this uh, cult of scrolls who believed the Earth was theirs and that sort of thing, uh, and they were an offshoot from the scrolls, which fits with their new version of the scrolls as victims of the Kree, <laughs> which was never the story <laughs> in Marvel Comics, but, you know, they wanted to preach about something else. But anyway... They still could have this offshoot that's a little more aggressive and, and nasty. And uh, the woman that was their leader disguised herself as a uh, Spider-Woman. And uh, they, all this time, they had formed a new Avengers team with Spider-Woman uh, on the team, and it was never really Spider-Woman. And then eventually, you know, they find they, and a lot of these, that was a way of bringing back characters that were seemingly dead, <laughs> but had been replaced uh, by shape-shifting scrolls. Um, uh, but then again, it's like, well, then you still got to explain how they're alive. And I don't know what I came up with stories or what have you. But uh, that at some point, that's when they uh, switched them out like that. And some that they thought had come back weren't, hadn't come back, I think. But that's the way comic book characters go. They always, oh, the death of so-and-so. And it's almost never true. Uncle Ben's still dead. And uh, Marvel, the original Captain Marvel. Well, the second original, at least for Marvel Comics. <laughs> The original is, of course, Shazam. But uh, Marvel, he died of cancer. And as far as I know, there's been time travel stuff and uh, yet other uh, scrolls copying him. <laughs> stuff like that. Maybe in a clone or two. I don't know. And then, boy, the guy had kids all over the place. <laughs> he got around. Uh, but, uh, no, he's he's remained dead. So... Uh, other than that, everybody else has died uh, just about, <laughs> and they all they all come back. So, but the movie's a different thing when you've got actors aging out of their roles and stuff. So you want to give them a good send off, 
and uh, then you could just reboot at some point. And boy, are they reaching that point. Uh, didn't have to. There was ways to continue this, uh, but not with the crap you've been delivering. Uh, so again, this might be an okay show. Some elements of the original plot can be there. It just can't really take advantage of that the way the comic book did. Because you just don't have the characters for it. And introducing a new character, and then the, the, the second to the last episode reveal, oh my god, she's just a girl! Okay, but that's not as big of an impact it would have been. Uh, with, admittedly, a gimmick, but, but a pretty cool one that they did in the original series. So, I don't know. As a send-off for Furia of a series, it would, could be a good one, but he's in Marvels and stuff. <laughs> And that's like, maybe this is an honest answer from, yeah, hopefully I'm not done. I don't know. Like, he, probably two different scenes they shot, and he doesn't know which one they're using. One he survives, the one he doesn't, you know. Or he's like, yeah, you're dead, but don't worry. Tell us, we'll take your place and play you for whatever reason. <laughs> because people need a Nick Fury. So, something like that. Anyway. So, uh, could it be a good show? Yes, it could, uh, for what it is. But that's about it. And um, MCU uh, is in desperate need uh, of something far more than just uh, an okay show or even a good one. 